Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the finals of the Bradley Open. We have reached that point. A long weekend, a lot of games, a lot of surface, but uh, we have reached the top eight. Welcome into Bullstream TV as we uh, get you underway with our bracket finals. First match right here in front of us on 37 and 38. Daniel Ferris, number five seed, taking on Brandon Bone, who is the number four seed. And for this four or five matchup, we've been watching Brandon obviously throughout the weekend. And many of you obviously have been watching as well. And we get a special guest. We appreciate taking uh, the opportunity um, while being a parent. Please welcome in the Hall of Famer, Parker Bone the third. Well, thank you. Appreciate How are you, you today? I'm well, sir. Good, good deal. It's uh, been pretty enlightening watching this event take place and, and watch, uh, I'll say, bowling balls turn into marbles. <laughs> My God, snowballs, they're past that point. <laughs> I asked you off camera, um, had you seen the more surface ever in a bowling tournament? <laughs> and you gave me a, a nice story. So meaning to say that it's not very often that you see this level of surface supply at, at any event. No, my God, no. Especially, I mean, this younger generation, and, and we're talking about three generations younger than me, for God's sakes. But this younger, younger generation has more hook potential than generations prior to them ever had between the power that they can possess in a bowling ball, between the technology that is available with the bowling balls and equipment, and what they actually do physically to the ball is just, it's phenomenal. And then when I walk up and down the lanes and I'm watching these guys hit their bowling balls with surface beyond surface, <laughs> I just think to myself, oh my God, they have got to be really, really tight. Best two out of three are all matches. We do have uh, one, two, three, four matches uh, going on. The one match we don't have access to via camera wise is the one way down on 45 and 46. And that is the number three seed, Zeke Bate. He is taking on the number six seed, Eric Jones. Now we had a lot of Eric Jones fans in the booth, so we'll keep you updated as best as we can uh, in regards to that match. We'll also take a look at uh, Pontus Anderson, who are both very well this morning to uh, capture the number seven seed. And speaking of bowling well, I believe it was 1393 for six games this morning for Jacob Buttruff, who went from 25th to second in six games today. That's a lot of striking that out here. That is a lot of strike. Yeah, I mean, he, he killed him the first two games. He shot 520 out of the gate. And when, when you look at most players are trying to figure out a way to shoot 200. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Jacob comes out of the gate, I think 240, 270. That's, uh, that was pretty incredible. And then, of course, our number one seed is Anthony Nyer. He is taking on Williams Vincent, who had a nice day as well. And he moved into the eighth spot at plus 54. That was the number to reach the top eight. If you are just joining us, we say again, welcome to you. I know we are watching not only bowling here at the Bradley, but the Pete Weber Missouri Classic is also going on on network television live on FS1. So it's a great day for bowling as Sundays typically are. Uh, Parker, as we get into uh, this match and we'll watch a few more frames before we may take a look at uh, another match. Uh, specifically for Brandon, what surfaces seem to work? And a great question there from Aaron uh, for Brandon as he got kind of comfortable and the games kind of went on in this tournament. He's been putting a lot of 180 to start on, on bowling balls. Uh, you know, he had some fresh 180s on one or two bowling balls there, but he started to mellow some of them down where they had, let's say, used 180, which sure. in, all, in essence is going to be like 240 on a bowling ball. 360 wasn't quite enough. Uh, he felt like he really had to slow his speed down a little bit more than what he was going to be comfortable or, or stepping outside the box, so to speak. And it doesn't matter what the surface is that you're going to put on, and including shine. If you're out there bowling, you have to bowl within your own realm. And when you reach a little bit too far outside of your box, sometimes inconsistencies or the occasional bad shot will show up. And on any level, that's not going to help your score. Picture in picture on the bottom right of your screen, that is the one versus eight match. And Anthony and I are well, looking like he has looked, uh, especially on the fresh, out to an early front three. 
Yeah, he's got a pretty good look at the lane consistently across the center. I know he, he struggled one or two games, but not catastrophic. Obviously, that's why he was the tournament leader. He's seen a vision out there and was able to capitalize on it on more, let's say, pairs or more lanes across the center. And he obviously is, is keeping up with that so far. Obviously, you have an understanding of, of the left side of the lane. And for those who don't, may not know, Parker Bone the third is, is left-handed, <laughs> uh, just in case. And, and so th do you think that helped, did that help you see it a little bit clearer? Um, and then sometimes when you watch Brandon Bowl as much as you watch him bowl now? It, it can. Okay. You know, when, when you're out there, there's no question about it that the most pristine part of the lane is outside of five on the left side. There's not a lot of players that like to play the gutter. And although, you know, the mystique would have it, left-handers like to play the gutter, the vast majority of bowlers don't like to play out near the gutter. But the elite bowlers, and I'm going to call these gentlemen out here the elite mm -hmm. bowlers of what we had in this field. Right. Uh, they're not afraid to play out there. You learn how to play all aspects of the game. And for their, or to their defense, they got out there and they were able to see something that allowed them to capitalize on it. So even though they're putting a lot of surface on the bowling balls, they're kind of trying to get the ball to match up like a urethane ball. They want it to stand up early and then work its way or glide its way with a slow, consistent arc into the pocket. Well, one person that also knows the gutter very well, and that's Daniel Farish. He grew up in Louisville, from Louisville, uh, and he's got that uh, that local namesake here as the as the lone local in the top eight. And his parents are here, Janice and Chuck. First time making the top eight too for Daniel. And he's bowled this event multiple times. Plenty of top forties. Big well, carry. It is a good carry, but Daniel's not playing the gutter. He's right. pointing it pretty direct up about that second arrow. Uh, you know, might be a little bit inside of that. But just watching him bowl, the, the great thing about what he does, he stays dead behind the ball. He's just trying to roll it or let it roll right up. Make sure he's catching a piece of the one in the front there. And he's been pretty consistent so far, keeping it right there in the one three and uh, doing what it needs to do. We talked to him a little bit uh, yesterday and today, and uh, coming into this morning, he wasn't sure which way uh, as far as where to play on the lanes that was going to go. It sounded like the conversation amongst the righties uh, after the advancers round last night was maybe some players might try more of the fallback. That didn't seem to be the case today. I think more uh, tried to play out together uh, as a group, speaking of the righties in that, in that aspect, which helped him. Mm -hmm. um, in that regard, do what he needs to do. Yeah, well, right now, he, he got past that point. Yep. So, basically, it's just him, obviously, and Brandon on their pair of lanes. And, and even looking at all the matchups here, it's really coincidental the way that it fell out. You have one lefty on every pair. You have one right-hander on every pair. So, realistically, the way that I look at it, you're going to develop that lane the way that you see it. And if you take and go out there and do the best that you can do, understand the lane and keep things under control, you have a good opportunity to fate your own destiny. It doesn't mean that it's all going to work out that way, but you have a much better chance than not when you start adding it up. Nice match brewing again. Best two out of three. So it's the first player to win two games in each of these matches. Again, Anthony Nyer goes front five, nine spare. Nice early lead over Williams Vinson. Um, in the Buttruff Pontus Anderson match. Uh, Buttruff starting a little slow. Yeah, Buttruff, uh, he, he appears to be on a struggle bus right now at the present moment, but <laughs> just like we said earlier, he's not that guy to be on the struggle bus forever. No. And if he gets it figured out, Pontus is certainly going to have his hands full. You know, and a lot of people here locally don't know about Pontus because he's obviously over in Europe, as well as William Svensson over here bowling against Anthony Nyer. But I can tell you right now, they are two players that certainly have a high name overseas in the European area. They bowl a lot of EBT tournaments. And uh, I can tell you, from watching them in the past, they're not afraid with a ball and ball in their hand. No, they, they got it done today. Pontus went on a nice run. Uh, he had a front eight uh, situation. William ended up going 262 to put him back in contention. And as uh, Daniel misses the head pin right. Yeah, he missed the head pin right, but he didn't leave himself in a lot of trouble. He's got 
Got the one, two, eight standing there. So fortunately, the way you look at that as a bowler, all three of them are together. So now hopefully you get the ball to the left side of the head pin. He's not playing a big hook by no means. You get the ball to the left side of the head pin, you should relatively easy cover that spare. The booth with the Hall of Famer, Parker Bone the third, at least for uh, a match here. The winner of this match will move on to 41 and 42 and will face the number one seed, Anthony Nyer, or the number eight seed, Williams Vincent. In our other two matches, the Buttruff Anderson winner will face the Bate Jones winner on 37 and 38. So to go and a fresh burn, and then the finals will be contested on fresh on 35 and 36. Yeah, and to give everybody a little update down there between Zeke Bate uh, and Eric Jones, it appears right now that Zeke has an open early on in this game so far and and Eric although he's clean doesn't have a double yet so it's basically a 190 to 180 game so far through about six and a half or seven frames oh, let it roll and the two pin will not roll for Daniel yeah with this uh with the amount of oil they had on a lane you don't see too many guys rolling out the two pin or the three pin not here. <laughs> Sitting in the back, I've seen very, very few. <laughs> Ball doesn't want to make that strong arc on the back end and really throw the head pin in the wall where it comes out and does that damage. So he'll easily pick up the one pin spare. Obviously, he's not where he is right now. Daniel is not standing here because he was going to miss things like that in the middle of the lane. That is correct. We had a chance to know him for a very long time. We went to college together. And... Um, one of the best parachutes I've ever seen. Daniel, the lone player in this match so far to double. Brandon working on three consecutive nine spares. Well, he threw that one pretty good. Zeke has himself another split down there. Meanwhile, Anthony Nyer just continues to roll forward. Obviously, every every player here got here uh, because they they did the work to do to get here. When you get into match play and you've bowled match play I'm sure, a gazillion times over, over the course of your <laughs> career, um, it, it's such a different atmosphere. And then you start thinking about you know how can you make the lanes favorable for yourself. Um, what do you think the best ways for some of these players were to do that based on what you've seen today and, and a little bit of yesterday? Well, I mean, somebody can say, well, the lanes are extremely tight, so you got to break them down a little bit to match your game. Well, it doesn't take many shots to try to break them down, but really all you're doing is breaking down the very front two or three feet of the lane. You're not going to break the rest of that lane down unless you bowl for about three days on it. There's plenty of oil down there. So, you know, understanding the pair understanding the lanes and trying to get up and overtake what's out there is going to be the biggest thing but in a format like this one of the biggest things that really holds forthright and we could watch this right now with uh mr svensson over here bowling against anthony nyer anthony is easily going to win this first game so right now he has a ninth and tenth frame if i was him i'm going to try something right to figure out, let me, if it's another bowling ball, if it's a different hand position, or, or another way to attack the pair itself that I can use that going forward because it's only going to be two more shots and they're going to be starting game two. Take a quick look over at uh, 31 and 32 real quick. Off camera, Daniel just wrapped a 10. Great shot for Daniel there in that right lane. Had an open frame for Eric Jones down there. That game is obviously a little bit closer than we both think right now. Yeah, and, and the pace of these matches, again, as you open up match play, it's it's a, uh, everyone's kind of on the same rhythm, going to finish at about the same pace. Mm -hmm. Anthony Nyer. Oh my, I was just talking about spare shooting and Daniel makes a mistake. Yeah, that's a unfortunate error there for Daniel. 
you know, he's still in control of the match by all means, but that's something that you don't want to let slide, especially when you're talking a one game match. You know, when you're bowling qualifying, God forbid one slips past you, you got more games to pick up for it. Right now, when you're bowling one game matches, it's 10 frames. You got to make every shot count. And at the moment, clinging now to a four pin lead. Big ninth frame. And Zeke Bate just put a double on the board. So that game down there on lane 45 and six between him and Eric Jones has to be pretty close. Interesting the way uh, the Pontus Anderson and Jacob Buttruff match is developing as well. Buttruff looking to his right. He's going to wait for Eric Jones before he steps on the approach, then looks left, waits for Daniel to complete, and then we will move to but Jacob Buttruff on 41 and 42. Ninth frame. Looking for some help. 310 in the ninth. Yeah, not going to get it there right now. Maybe a little frustrated with himself. Back to Brandon quickly here. He's got a chance to step up and win game one. It's been solid on the right lane. Threw a pretty good right there. Sets himself up with a strike in the ninth. Uh, he can get a, a double in the tenth and, and walk away here with uh, game one after trailing the entire game. Anthony Nyer shot 255 for those of you scoring at home. 255 for Nyer. <laughs> that beats the field. But he's only got to worry about his opponent. We have said that a lot in the last two days. Williams Vincent 170. So 1 to 0 in favor of Anthony Nyer. First hit is a good one. He was a little slower on that shot. That ball had an opportunity to read the lane as it rolls up there and, and splashes him around. So you definitely need that one to make a statement, but this one here is, is what he's looking for right now. Jacob Buttrip just opened in the 10th for 164, so he's going to drop game one. Yeah, Pontus is going to win that game there. Brandon going for the second shot in the 10th here. Poof. High flush, and that's, that's a win. That's a pretty good shot right there, for sure. Meanwhile, down on the left, uh, Anthony Nyer starts with 250. Game one starts out game two with a 4-6 split, so we'll have to see how that unfolds. Things get underway. Eric Jones, he is complete with game one. Bait in the 10th frame working on a double. We'll get you an update there. Brandon finishes with 214. 214 is a good score. So up one to zero. Bone over Farish. Zeke Bate with what looks to be a three-bagger. Looks to be a three-bagger. Pretty excited about it. So, uh, and some clapping going on. I'm going to say that very possibly either he just won that game or he's given himself a good opportunity here with one more shot. For Daniel, who uh, made an unforced error there that ultimately is the difference in the game and allowed Brandon, obviously, to set himself up double in the ninth and tenth to get a dub here. Got to get back at it. Bold a very good game otherwise. Greetings to all of you watching internationally. We just talked about uh, some of our international players in Pontus Anderson and Williams Vincent, for example. We have viewers from Finland watching. Ferris did try a ball change on the fill. Officially to 214-199 for our 4-5 match. It looks like Jacob Buttruff made a ball change to start frame number one in game two 
in his match as he trails. Let's take a look at the 1-8. Not exactly sure what the final score is down there, but I can tell you Zeke Bate is taking his time to throw this last shot. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go take a look at that. Nyer. I nearly made that one the hard way, but uh, as Parker mentioned, throws the oh, shot, shoots 255, and then comes out open, open to start game number two. Well, uh, it's obvious why Zeke was taking a little time on that fill ball. He had two pins at the other end, and made the spare and won the game 185 to 183 over Eric Jones. Anthony Nyer with a convincing strike there in the third frame, but finds himself uh, 22 down here after two frames. Open, open, starting game two. And you know, that's another unique thing about match play when you're playing the best two out of three. You're not playing total wood, you're playing the game. And it is amazing how fast things can change at any given point in any given match. See it all the time. Farish. There was a pretty good shot to start game one. That one there obviously getting a little too far up the lane, leaving the 3-6-10. Fairly easily covering that spare. Meanwhile, right next door, Pontus Anderson chops the three off the six, having an open frame there in the second frame. So Jacob Butcher finds himself having a little bit of the early lead for game two. Nice ball change so far. Seems to be the, the right one early double. Yeah, starting out with a double there, obviously that gives uh, Jacob a little bit more feeling on what's going on with the pair. As Brandon steps up there and throws a convincing strike for a double as well. Meanwhile, Svensson over here, uh, although he's only got one strike with a couple of spares, like we said earlier, he's a 21 pin lead going into the fourth frame here over Anthony Nyer, who won the first game convincingly with a 255 score. In your experience, after you have such a great start in a match and then you start game two a little flat, what, and it could be a, a ton of things. Lanes change vastly and quickly, as we just said. Um, what, what are some of the things that you sometimes see and then how does one make sure, oh, nice break for Brandon, that mentally they remain in it? I think you just have to take a, a deep breath and settle down within yourself. You know, if you just bowl 255, you've got a really good look on the pair that you're bowling on. You know, unless you tell me you had a couple of Brooklyn strikes or some, some slop out there, typically two ga games of 250 aren't that way because you're all over the place. Right. You're fairly close. So if you just take a deep breath and just settle down to make good shots, you can get things right back on the way that you're supposed to. And as I say that, you know, William Svensson threw a big four, and Anthony just gets up there on a strike and completely misses the head pin. So, Dan Farish goes Brooklyn over there for the strike. But I'm going to say it this way. He is certainly not the first one to go Brooklyn this weekend, and he is not going to be the last. <laughs> Best way to get a strike, you got to hit that one in the front first. Not always a guarantee, but... More than likely, the odds are in your favor. <laughs> we 
welcome you in to Bullstream TV as the viewership grows. Appreciate you tuning in. Nice shot there for Mr. Nyer. And off camera, Daniel Farish able to knock out the five. Nearly a 5-7. Brandon Bone with the start of the front three. Pontus Anderson. Right now, early trails. He does have the one game to zero lead early between he and Jacob Buttriff in a very close match in game one, specifically between Zeke Bate and Eric Jones. Yeah, well, for Pontus, that's about the only lead he's got is 1-0 in the, in the match itself. Going light, leaving a two pin there right now. Finds himself trailing by just over 20 pins. Still early in the match, or early in the game, let's say. And uh, anything can happen. Over here with our match with William Svensson and Anthony Nyer. William goes really light and splashes him around. Gives himself a strike on the scoreboard, and Brandon's up here in the fourth frame. Good shot there from the Weber International product. Moving over from Mount Mercy this year, prior to this season. It's almost ITC time. We got sectionals coming up in March. The sectionals assignment show actually is next Wednesday. Teams will find out uh, which location they'll be headed to. And then vying for, of course, spots to advance to ITCs, which is just down the street here. It's in uh, at Kingpin. Wonderful facility ran by the McCarthy family. It is a beautiful facility, too. I'm actually looking forward to Wednesday. I can't even make a decision. Well, not so much me, but I'm going to say more so for my wife because I may be out on the tour somewhere. But uh, mm. I'll say as a family, and it's not <laughs> just our family, it's every family. Right. Can't wait till that decision comes out right. there so that people can start making plans going accordingly. It's an exciting time in the college ranks. And you, you get a chance, obviously, to... Uh, have two times the fun and soon three times the fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's coming up. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, we're watching Brandon here. Brandon goes to Weber. And uh, our other son, Justin, he's going to SCAD in Savannah, Georgia. So it could be a split decision as to where we go as a family. But uh, our daughter just committed. She's going to Vanderbilt next year. So Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's going to be uh, three going three different ways. And. Well, there's only two, one set of parents. I don't know how we're going to figure that one out. But you got to talk to the Pates. <laughs> well, they know how to do it. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Take it one step at a time. <laughs> Jacob Buttroff up here. Going light again, leaving the 3-6 this time. Still has an early lead in that match. All of a sudden, Anthony Nyer is getting really good at hitting the two-pin here. He's got uh, the 136, the 136, the 136, and the 136 again. Three out of the last four frames he's left that spare. So I don't know if that's the one he wants to keep practicing, but he's got it right in front of him again. It doesn't even look like the uh, it's, a, it's a particular lane, although he's left it twice on one lane. Yeah, he's left it twice on one lane, but it's starting to, starting to be an image. As Daniel gets up there convincingly, makes a seven pin. Staying clean through five frames. As well as Brandon is staying clean. Pontus Anderson here on the right lane, lane 42. Leaving a soft 10. It's a common leave here on 50 feet of oil. Yeah, talking to some uh, local players who bowl here often. Uh, getting the corners out, that executive in general, sometimes is a challenge. Right. And then you just add 50 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Daniel throws a pretty good shot there, splashing him around. Put the strike on the board. And, and William Svensson over here uh, against Anthony Nyer posts a triple. Match is on its way to being even. Again, best two out of three. Our next pairs will be 41, 42, 37, and 38. The low end will be uh, kind of off, if you will, and then our finals will be on 35 and 36. To wait for Brandon Bone. Daniel Farish looking for, oh, we'll need a double at some point. 
Leanne, a four, six, seven there. Slicing through the, the nose. Yeah, could have been a combination of a little soft or could be that the lane is actually breaking down just a tiny bit. Uh, Brandon will have to make a, a fine adjustment there and try to get things back on track. But right now, he just can't let that rattle him. He's got to get two pins here. Two counts is four. He's on a strike. And go along with the flow. Count is always important. He takes care of that. As Vincent takes care of his spare, 3-6-10 over on 31 and 32. Jacob Buttruff. Quick look. Mm. Seven pin for Jacob. After the early double, it's been a uh, single pin city minus the fifth frame with an eight count. Yeah, but he still finds himself in the lead by 20, so got control over what's going on. Boy, you saw that ball just re right at the arrows, and that's where a little bit of that yeah. you know, it, strategy comes into play. Absolutely. The way it ball faces up right there, you can see the way that it's read the lane. It checks up, and it's right on line for the one-two and, and goes through the pins pretty convincingly. As Anthony Nair gets up there and posts two really good shots in the eighth and ninth for a double on the board. Well, that's huge and uh, you know makes Vincent have to stay honest. As we get down to it in that game, we'll go to there or uh, to 31 and 32, excuse me, here next. Ken Farish, double. Breaks down a split. Yeah, fortunately breaks that down, leaves just a 4-7. But that was a, he was really looking for an opportunity there to throw a double on a board and take a little bit of a lead here over Brandon at that point. Meanwhile, Jacob Buttruff completely flags the head pin, leaving the 1-3. Spare off camera for Farish. Vincent gets the seven pin to fall. That's a huge strike in the ninth. The best Nair can get to is 205. However, if Mr. Vincent does not strike here, if he does not strike in the first shot in the 10th frame, Nair can step up, not only win the game, but win the match. Yeah, well, I can tell you right now, William Swenson is definitely aware of that, and he <laughs> certainly wants to make sure that he puts a stamp, signed seal of approval here to make sure they're going to game three. Big shot necessary for Svensson here. We'll keep it here. I'll tell you, Farish off camera. Breaks down something into a five. Williams, Vinson. There it is. Pretty good shot right there. Nice little slide out right there to the left. Barn anything wild and crazy. Count is still important here on this next shot. And to bring you up to speed on our empire there. And your Ferris making that five pin. Seek Bate and Eric Jones have a, a little bit of a nail biter going back and forth right down there. It looks like it's a uh, the current score of this game, roughly 2-0 to 2-0. So we'll, uh, we'll bring you up to speed once we get a little bit more known on the scoreboard up there. That's the story of their match to, to begin with, and that's a win for William. We're going to even this thing up at 1-1. Back to Bone. High flush, big double. A little bit more loft there. A little bit more loft to try to cut down that hook early stage, and, and the ball checks and... Well, it got right where he needed it to. Well, Brandon mentioned anything about as he traveled the pairs, were there any pairs for him that uh, weren't favorable as he was maybe taking a few notes mentally? <laughs> Three and four. <laughs> Three and four. <laughs> Three and four. <laughs> he bowled 255 last night down here on the high end. It went down to three and four after bowling 255 and hitting the pocket every shot but one. I think he hit the pocket one time down there for 144. Stood right up, playing him similar to uh, how we watched Anthony Nyer play him. And those two crossed together this morning. Yeah, Brandon has a control right here. The, the match is not locked yet, though, but he certainly does have control. If Daniel Ferris can strike out here for 218, Brandon will need a mark in the 10th to win not only the game, but to win the match. 
Case in point right there, Anthony and I are leaving a 3-7 and a 10th. Misses everything to the left, but probably was trying to get lined up to throw a better strike ball. Daniel Ferris throws a great shot right there in the ninth frame. Big ball change. <laughs> looking, at a, looking at a family member or friend back here. That's, that's hey. his dad, talking to his dad. Ball rep, how about a little help out here? <laughs> I can I can honestly admit I've been there. I'm about to say right. You you, <laughs> you exactly know what what that that situation is like. And I don't want my ball rep to look at me like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> wow, that was another fantastic shot by Daniel. At, at worst. At worst, he keeps Brandon honest. Well, he's going to need this one here to keep him yeah, honest. Right. I mean, that one there at least keeps Brandon to make sure it's on the lane. But this one here is going to be the one that makes a difference. It's going to make him show up in the 10th frame to give, give him a mark. Game three underway, 31 and 32. Daniel Farish needs a strike here to force Brandon to mark in the 10th frame. Has it. Likes it. Wow, that was fantastic. What an incredible three shots those were. Man, talk about back being to the wall and producing. I got to give him all the credit in the world right there. Still needs a pretty good fill ball here. Doesn't want to let one slip away and, and get, you know, five or six. That's right, because count is always important here. Daniel trying to extend this match to three games. Brandon Bone leading one game to zero. 214, 199, the game one tally. Yeah, he's looking for at least eight here. If he gets eight here, that forces Brandon to get a mark. A little high trip in a four, but you know what? 10 down is 10 down. Got to give him a lot of credit there for those last four shots. All right, simple. Pontus Anderson doubling in the eighth and ninth here. Giving himself an opportunity against Jacob Buttruff over there. Meanwhile, ball in hand, Brandon Bone. Any sort of a mark. I'd say that's a pretty good mark. There it is. B squared will advance to the round of four. He will face either Anthony Nyer or Williams Vincent. And both of those players start nine spare, nine spare until Nyer strikes in the second. Oh, Pontus Anderson Pontus. just left the oh seven my God. ten. Throwing a great shot like that for a seven ten. Even nine spare gave him an opportunity to win that game, be it the match too. And now Rip Rack 7-10 completely takes him out of the game. They will go to game three. Two matches going three games. Parker is going to check in on the Zeke Bait. Eric Jones matchup. And it gives a quick look at a different piece of equipment. Brandon Bone, 218. Or excuse me. Daniel Farish, 218. Brandon Bone, 246. And that's a 2-0 victory. Well, down on the end over there, I just... Uh Took a bird's eye view. Eric Jones is convincingly going to win game two. Okay. So he can uh, strike out for 230. I don't know if he struck or left a seven pin on that one, but does not matter. They will be going to game, game three. All right, so let's check in on our top seat. Anthony Nyer. Bottom right corner there is Buttruff and Svensson. Jacob Buttruff, Anthony Nyer, uh, Williams Vincent, I assume. I see R&R &R still here, B-Rob, 
Not sure who else is making the trip or who else is going to make the trip. Zeke Bates going to make that trip probably to Anderson. Parker, you're headed to Anderson, I understand, right? I am sometime, uh, sometime tomorrow morning, okay. actually. I'm going to actually relax tonight. It's going to chill. Look at you. You deserve it. Other than the fact that i got to get Brandon to the airport about 4.30 a.m. I don't know if that's called chilling. Then. <laughs> I can come back and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be a good game three. Anthony and I are back on track after letting game two slip away. So... Meanwhile, off camera, Zeke Bate is going to start game three down there on 45 and six. We'll try to keep you updated as to how things go on and move along there. I can tell you this, he just went right through the nose and rolled something over there to take the, the six pin out for a strike, so. Pontus and Buttruff. No, Pontus left again. Just the tough 7-10 in the 10th frame of game two. That was a dirty break. Definitely a dirty break. But I'll tell you what, we got a barn, barn burner going on right here between William Svensson and Anthony Nyer. Spare triple for both players. So neither one is literally looking at the other going, hey, I don't want it, you take it. You're going to have to earn it. They're bringing it all to the table right now. Not to play spoiler here, folks, but there is obviously live bowling, whether you're watching on your computer or mobile device. You could also be watching the PBA on said devices, too. But there is a champion at the Pete Weber Missouri Classic. There is, but I don't think we want to let that out of the bag in case somebody's taping it. Because there's always a DVR on a Sunday. That's right. That's right. So you're not going to hear it from us. So don't look at the chat either. Chat be nice. Nope. My wife has told me many a times, I don't want to know, I want to watch. <laughs> so, dear, if you're listening, I know that you're watching a little bit right now, but if you're listening, I have not said a word. Again, match total, Nyers, Vincent, 1-1. One, one. Updated that scoreboard. Brandon <laughs> Bone, if you're just joining us, defeated Daniel Farage two games to zero. Jacob Buttruff, Pontus Anderson, Tied at one. One game apiece. Again, best of three. Nyer again. This is fun. That's pretty incredible over there. Oh, a little loft for Pontus now. That's what he did in the 10th frame and unfortunately got a really bad break with that 7-10, but... It seems like that's how he's garnishing or controlling the fact of the ball hooking early to go high. Pretty smart play. Great thing is he didn't let that bad break in the 10th get the best of him. William Svensson up here. Ooh. Slaps the 10 out. Slap that 8 out as well. <laughs> he knew it. That is correct, Aaron Rose. Yep, we talked about it. Parker talked about the surface choices. Swenson, wow, what a great shot that was right through the 8-9 that time. I love his, uh, as he, his run out of shots. It's like a dance step. So what's pretty amazing here is 210 
folks is actually a very good game on what they're bowling on 215 or 220 is is a way above par and now both of these players have spare six bagger over here unfortunately one will be done after the next three frames Three of the four matches complete at the at this moment. This is the most intriguing. It's also going to be the next to be done. And then we'll get you to Pontus and Jacob Buttruff. Bang. Pontus going a little bit high, tripping the four, leaving the six. Nyer, of course, in a bowling family. Anthony is from a bowling family. His dad bowled out on tour, actually came out on, on tour about a year or two after me. Was fortunate to win two PBA tour titles. And I can almost rest assure you that his dad is back at home watching this live on the computer as things take place. So, Sister Alexis bowls on the PWBA tour. Also as a head coach at Wartburg College in Iowa. Alexis is not afraid to throw the ball down the lane either. Oh, oh, no love. Trying to show a little love there for William. Great pass, but now finds himself a little bit in the rears against Anthony. Tony Preston, great question. <laughs> Tony said, how do we have dueling 290s at the Bradley? He is someone <laughs> local and has bowled this tournament many times. <laughs> Well, I don't know. This is my first year showing up for it, but I'm going to tell you right now, God bless both of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Svensson wow. the first to blink. Unfortunate error there for William Svensson. And meanwhile, Zeke Bate down here on the other end, 2-10 two, two or 2-4-10. Two and that's not a good idea because Eric Jones has the front four right now. Again, the Bate Jones winner will face the Buttruff Anderson winner. Jacob Buttruff going high flush there. 10 pin lead over Pontus Anderson. William Swenson, great shot there in the ninth, but boy, is he going to kick himself in the pants after missing that 10 pin. I time. promise you he didn't travel all this way from sure. overseas to bowl the PBA tour or this event to watch a 10 pin be the reason that he's not going to advance into the semifinal round. Week seven there for Anthony, and he was about ready to step that one out. You know, I'm glad that you said week seven because I'm not going to say he left the week seven. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll take that. I got, I got Anthony. His week seven might be ringing seven for me. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about his power all week. As, as most who watch Anthony Bull, uh, that power got him a, a 7-10 a couple years back on the Masters show. Yes, it did. So did, he's not afraid to hum it down the lane. He's not afraid to possess a lot of power on the bowling ball going through the pins neither. So, But he made his seven pin. So now, strike right here is going to really make a difference in that match and a little bit high for a six pin. He's going to have to make this and then strike on the fill ball to shut out William Svensson. All of a sudden, it's got interesting again. Yes, it did. It was winning time, and it still is for Nair because he controls his own fate. Match score on your left. Eric Jones just left a six pin, so that stops his run. Front four, six pin. Spare coming up for Eric Jones. Pontus a little more aloft that time, but ball does not finish leaving the bucket. So they'll have to shoot the bucket here to, to keep that match within 10 pins. As we watch Anthony get up right now, score tells the story. Strike on this ball is a winner for the match. 
Well, that leaves the opening for Williams Fenson to strike out and tie the last game. And that will force whatever the roll-off rules are here at the Bradley. I will confirm with the tournament director. I don't know if it's a one ball or a, a ninth and ten frame. I was talking to Jason earlier, maybe Friday on there about ties in certain situations. And uh, he mentioned ninth and tenth frame, but we'll confirm. Meanwhile, Eric Jones leaving the 10 pin. Great shot by William. One down, two to go to tie the match. One game. We would go to the extra game for a tie. That is one Ex game. One full game. One full game. Wow. So he's not only got to throw two more strikes here, but then he's got a possibility of 10 more frames. One game, first to two. If you think about it, if you follow college bowling, you've seen some ties. Sometimes they do tie in a game seven if they've tied earlier. So you got to break that tie. First to two wins in its traditional sense. Here we go. Wow, that was almost the old. <laughs> <laughs> Not what he wants to talk about. Five, seven, ten, but. Either way, it does elicit a smile, and Anthony Nyer, the number one C, will advance. He will face Brandon Bone. That should be fun. Yeah, I believe that'll be a good match, that's for sure. Power and power. Now we will turn our attentions to Jacob Buttruff and Pontus Anderson. Pontus left the bucket, made it, and then flagged the head pin for the one, two, four, and covered the spare. So although he's lost a little bit of wood count, he still finds himself close enough in this match that should Jacob Buttruff have some unfortunate pleasure along the way or or let's say doesn't post another double on the board, Pontus can still get up there and throw a couple of strikes and walk away victorious. Zeke Bates on the struggle bus a little bit down there, although he throws a great shot there and strikes. A couple of open frames there. Finds him behind Eric Jones. Oh. Well, I don't know about the struggle bus, but wow. <laughs> that's a. Uh, Count it. That's being on the fortunate right train at the right time. Sometimes you, uh, you get one. Yeah, well, Pontus, Pontus can still strike out for 245 here. And that will mean that Jacob, by all means, is going to have to get up and throw some strikes to, to shut him out. So we'll have to see how this unfolds. Well, he left a bucket last time on that lane, and he made sure he gave it the extra wrench that time. Not exactly the right answer, but finds himself with a 3-6-10. Now he's going to have to make this. Is that really just our subconscious as players? Yeah, you know, when we miss it on, on one shot and then just simultaneously or instantly we know like don't miss it yeah well that's that's what it is it's your subconscious working and uh it, you start overthinking just a little bit and you look at what's going on and you go oh man i gotta make sure i grab this one well grabbing it's not the answer and i actually had a mistake on the score there i thought he could add 245 uh or something like that it was only 230 so now he finds himself Max score of 223. So he has to strike here, and Jacob has control of the match. Eric Jones down at the other end throws another double up. Meanwhile, Zeke Bates shaking his head. He just threw a great shot for a double, probably going, my God, I had things <laughs> under control and seen what I wanted to do and let some things slip by me. shot for Pontus splash them around good enough once they all fall down a little sigh of relief maybe on on his behalf but he, he let that one go and and it did everything it needed to do 
but he's probably looking and shaking his head going, why did I grab that one the last frame? The Jones bait match still looks to be very close. Both players on a double and following splits, no less. There's one more split on the board for Zeke bait and a few less strikes actually now that I see that. Yeah, that's gotta be match over there. With uh, Eric Jones beginning, uh, front, that's right, front four, nine spare, split, double for Jones. Big shot there for Buttruff. Yeah, Buttruff right now, uh, the way the things stand, he just needs, uh, I believe, eight on the first ball. And that'll be a, a winner in this match right here. So one round of four semifinal match is determined. Anthony Nyer will face Brandon Bone on 41 and 42. Zeke Bates and or Eric Jones now will face Jacob Buttruff. And I don't know Jacob's exact age, but I'm gonna say right now, he is definitely the senior citizen. He rolls out another three pin right over there in the 11th frame. But he is the oldest guy out of the four left by a long shot. I think Jacob is approaching his 30th birthday. He's 29 currently, he'll be 30 in April. But you are correct. Sub 30, the elder statesman. <laughs> yes. So what we thought might happen in round one is going to happen in round two. And we are now guaranteed to have all lefties <laughs> yeah. for the rest of the tournament. It is, uh, it is pretty amazing the way that happened. You would think that somebody would prevail or somebody would figure something out. Um, he, you know, obviously William looked like he was on the cusp or as close as anybody was gonna get to there uh, when we look at those things, especially when you look at the score he posted. He didn't go down, you know, with, with an unfortunate game. He posted a pretty solid game there. And uh, when you look at the other players that are out there right now, all four matches were won on the left side, or the left side prevailed. And uh, unfortunately, all the right-handers are packing up and going home. Well, but I tell you, for me, now I'm, I, I was already excited, I'm interested, but I'm, I'm interested now because of, uh, you know, how the lanes may break down, um, how they may further break down, I should say, because we're going to some pairs that have already been bowled on. Sure. Uh, Brandon will not bowl on 37 38. He's gonna move to 41 and 42. Yep. Um, Anthony Nyer goes all the way down to 41 and 42. Uh, no one is going to bowl, of course, on the same pair that they just bowled. Butcher is going to go over to 37 and 38 with Eric Jones. But, uh, you know, I, I, I have to assume that lefties know what they've been doing and lefties know what other lefties have been doing, especially on this. Absolutely. You got to think it's somewhat similar to a degree. Maybe someone wants to see it read a little bit sooner than someone else. Do you Do you see that every now and then amongst lefties? Absolutely. You okay. know, for years when I ball out on tour, you know, and I'm going to go back to when I first started the tour in, in the 80s. You had the straight players. You started to have some of the crankers. And you definitely had a fair amount of the tweeners. And then things rolled on. The straight players, one by one, continued to dissipate. And you had a fair amount of tweeners, but crankers were building more and more. During that whole time, you had strictly the group of left-handers. And it didn't matter how they threw it. They just put, well, you got the crankers, you got the tweeners, you got the straight players, and you got the lefties. Right. right. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, all the lefties throw it different enough. All of their ball rolls are just subtly different that somebody will see it and somebody will not. So that being said, right now, what they're going to do to the lanes, they're only going to affect them themselves right you know and the fact that they've got an opponent that's left-handed is going to make it i don't want to say challenging they're just going to work their way through it and they've got to pay attention to what their opponent is doing or see how they see the lanes going and then process it once they process it let's face it dumb luck can always prevail but the guy that has a little bit better vision of the lane and keeps his ball where it's going to be around the pocket well, 
they have a better chance of, of walking forward and finding themselves in the title match. I like that. You break that down. Should be interesting. And there is five minutes of practice as well. And so uh, there is a an opportunity to – I'm so intrigued how this is about to <laughs> shake out. Uh, based on the surface used, Eric Jones coming over, not, not, not too chalky. Looks nice and smooth, though. Yeah, well, they can't they can't resurface they, balls. They, that is correct. So they cannot. You know, they have what they have. They got to take and, and make the best of it. And I'm sure some uh, surface they, some just in case to have ready. I was just going to say, I'll guarantee you that you know, if not knowing the four players that are out here, they've probably all got one more ball in their bag that has fresh surface if they want to go to it. But they're going to go out there and figure out what they need to do. And if they want a little bit more surface, they're going to turn to a fresher ball in their bag. If they don't and they want to continue with what they have, then that's the way that they're going to see the lane. But it, it will be interesting the way that it plays out. And the biggest interesting part of it will be, once again, when they get to the title match. Because we've all seen plenty of title matches where it's just right-handers on a pair. Okay. Well, now this one is going to bring its fortunate circumstances where – you're going to have the same basic concept, but now they're going to be all left-handed. They will get five minutes of practice, and uh, I'll take a small break, allow Parker uh, as well if he needs to speak and talk with Brandon uh, because he is coach and parent, so we appreciate Parker. If he happens to return, we will welcome him, but uh, parent first. Uh, so, Parker, go handle your business. I appreciate it. And uh, round of four coming up next here on Bullstream TV. Watch uh, practice of both matches. Very, very intriguing situation that we have here. We may have Parker back. We may not. As I, I told him earlier, certainly would love to have him, but uh, understood he was in a, in a parent coach uh, position. I want to respect that. And so we will give him whatever he needs. And of course, if Brandon does happen to make the finals, it will be nearby on 35 and 36, which make it a little bit easier for Parker. We appreciate him. So who you got in these matches, folks? The lefty train is rolling. All right, so those, let's watch a little bit of uh, Eric Jones from a practice perspective as soon as this one is over. Brandon. I think that was a ball that uh, he threw on the fill after his first match and uh, looked to be kind of fresh from a surface perspective handling that before uh, the match began. And so giving that a look, you see what Anthony Nyer is doing as well. On that pair, 41 and 42 again, Butcher just got off of that and Pontus Anderson. So there was one lefty there, obviously, with one lefty being on every pair that we had. High seed in this matchup between Jones and Buttruff will be Buttruff. Yep. Eric Jones was could have been a uh, one-two type seed as well. Had a game or two that uh, removed him from the top of the leaderboard, but it did not remove him as he battled back to uh, maintain a spot in the top eight. Guys been bowling very well from what I understand. 19 years old.
Time to grab a Sammy, Jeff said. Appreciate the, uh, the audio checks, just making sure. Folks, if you wouldn't mind, hit the thumbs up on this vid. And if you have not, please subscribe to Bullstream TV. It is appreciated. Round of four coming up next. Many of you have uh, subscribed this weekend. Thank you very much. I was going to say, I think it's been on the road who's been saying uh, or called Eric Jones for the win. We've had some Brandon Bone winners. We had some folks that said Butters was going to win earlier. And uh, I know we had, I think, one or two people say that Anthony Nyer was going to take advantage and, and handle business as well. Underway here, Eric Jones versus Jacob Buttruff. And then uh, Brandon Bone facing Anthony Nyer, that's a one versus four. Nyer the one, Bone the four. Of course, lane choice important. Buttrup the two, Jones the six. And a very auspicious start for both Nyer and Jones, the bottom of your screen. Missing the head pin was Bone. Chop the spare. And then the 2, 4, 7, 8, 10 for Anthony Dyer. And almost made it off the back. So two opens over there. Let's get that scoreboard over there quickly uh, situated for you. chance to watch Eric Jones. I mentioned his uh, U.S. Open performance. A nice job of leading the PTQ.
Of course, that event, Kyle Troop now calling Louisville home. Took home uh, the title. Eric did advance to the cashers round at the U.S. Open. Picked up a check. He finished 31st. Early start here for Jacob Butcher. He's kind of got that look in his eye. And this is this is how he looked earlier too. Honestly, speaking of uh, Jakey. A little bit of wiggle of the lefties. And obviously, Butcher of getting there a little bit. Uh, from a from a ball, a, a ball speed, a little slower certainly than Brandon and Anthony Nyer. Uh, I feel like you know again the power and power is right here in front of us on 41 and 42, and then you watch Jacob Buttruff, and then you watch uh, Eric Jones. Ball speeds look similar, roll a little differently. Aspicuous start continues. And it's like both of those players kind of thinking about uh, bowling. And it's not about bowling one another. But sometimes it's just the uh, the hype right around a match. Like, hey, I'm getting to bowl, you know, one of my guys, so to speak. And uh, they are starting in an odd manner. As we bring in our tournament director, Jason Utwal. Jason, some really good matches in the round of eight, as you always expect in the uh, in the Bradley. Yeah. Of course, I grabbed the wrong headset to start, or the, you know. But yeah, some some really good matches all the way across. Um, you know, four four righties, four lefties. Uh, the. The lefties just finished off this time, you know. Um, but there's been, overall, there's been some great bowling all weekend. I mean, even if you look at the, the next four spots that didn't make the uh, top eight, they were all on the right. Show to bowl great all weekend. <coughs> Benji bowled great all weekend. A um, couple, couple other guys up there as well. Nick Arvin made a run at the end. Um, you know, now you've got had a quality eight. Well, start with a quality 40 to start to eight uh, to four. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know I get to always hear about uh, comments right to left or who's got a look or who hasn't. But, <laughs> you know, I watched the, the two highest scores in the top eight uh, this morning were Jacob um, shooting 730 plus through uh, three games, and Zeke was right behind him with 730. So um, I think that debate will last an eternity for light, right to left and who makes what. And, you know, it just happens this year that uh, we've got four phenomenal lefties in the final. $12,500. dollars Correct? Mm -hmm. I've had some people tell me this weekend that as much as they love the money, that it's uh, they would almost bowl it for the title over the cash. 
Mm. Which is always interesting to hear. Gotta feel good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, a compliment to the history of the event. Um, you know, I, I wish I could say that I ran it from start to finish, but I haven't. You know, I've uh, been blessed with an opportunity to continue a great her heritage and lineage of the event. Um, you know, so everyone that helped start it to where it is now just, I think, carries on a good tradition. Good cover there. Heck, I get the easy job, Emil. I get to walk around and talk. What, write some checks? Write some checks. Yeah, definitely write some checks. You know, it's all the... Uh, all the people in the background that uh, help make the tournament successful as well. So Justin Peach is here every year with me. He runs around like a chicken with his head cut off doing all the scores and the numbers and the lane jumps and and everything like that. Um, my wife Brandy does a lot in the background with advertising and promoting and organizing and other ideas. Um, you know, it's, it's everyone that really helps make it work and then you know I've said quite a few times this weekend if it wasn't for the sponsors helping out we we would it wouldn't be as easy of a job to run you know uh, Motive, Cubica, AMF, CTD, H5G, Master Plumbing all those guys have helped in multiple multiple different ways you know and uh, you know we had uh, some extra helpers this weekend as well with uh, some score running and Picking up other stuff that we needed, so you know everyone help, that helped out that helped out that way this weekend has been uh, relieving stress whichever way we can. You know, and uh, <coughs> last but not least, I, I get the opportunity to run it here at Executive Strike and Spare. So you know, um, again, blessed with an opportunity to run a great center and have great ownership and that allow me the opportunity to run this event how I like. So I'm glad Austin Kohler is in the uh, in the chat. Austin, can you tell me if you made the top 40 last year or the year before that? Because I, I know I've seen you before. Maybe it just hasn't been here where I've seen you. I'm pretty sure Austin made the cut last year. He did, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he made a great move last night. Um, I think his last game was 255 to go from – Negative 109 to negative 54. Ends up being outside the cut by 30 to inside the cut by 20. <coughs> Those of you who may just be joining us, my name is Emil Williams, Jr. We've got the tournament director, Jason Utwal, here. I want to thank Parker Bone the third for joining me in the round of eight. He may return if uh, Brandon Bone makes the finals. I will happily give up my seat for that. <laughs> that is a hard act to follow. Third straight. Okay, I knew it. All right. Well, congrats, Austin. Great, great job from your vantage point. You're nicely done. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of in-state guys did a good job this year making the top 40. You know, Austin's one of them. Obviously, Daniel making the top eight. Um. <coughs> Sam Wooten as well in there. Uh, yeah, he had a nice uh, nice uh, run yesterday. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Second no. year in a row for Sam. Yeah, he and Brandon both made the, t uh, the advancers round. Yep. Let's say I'm advancing to the cashers round here this morning. Speaking of that, so 600 was a load of cash. Uh-huh. And then 12-5 to the winner. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the this will this will be the third fourth in regards to our those who are eliminated from the tournament. Where does that stack up? Yeah, I mean they uh, the guys out there decided to uh, chop up the pot a little bit different. So overall, it's paying uh, ten for first, five for second, twenty two fifty for semis, and twelve fifty for the uh, quarters. And again, you know, just so everybody's aware, I guaranteed the money for 12 5 for first. It's not my choice to make a chop, um, and I would never do that. Um, we had a meeting beforehand. Uh, it was a 
suggestion from some of the players, and ultimately this is their money. So, you know, that's what they wanted to do, and that's what I'm happy to do for them. So I think I think pretty good payday all the way around from, you know, from from first to eighth. Uh, an interesting leave for Butcher for the most obviously inopportune time after yeah. making the split in the ninth. It's a uh, second count of anything <coughs> but nine, but yikes. With Eric Jones maxing at 227, I mean, he's got to make this just to now put a little, apply a little pressure. It's some help. He gets one. Oh. So that is 205 for one Jacob Buttroff and Eric Jones. Almost handed to him. And that is a uh, first game win for Brandon over there as well. Nine spare strike here is a winner for Eric Jones. And then uh, both players with again, the bone Nyer match just started so strangely with several opens to begin. There it is. Great shot there. Meal, I'll be right back. Okay. Eric Jones will take game one. His opponent gave him an opportunity, and he did not miss. Anthony Nyer will take care of that spare. So Nair's going to be in the 130s. And, uh, boy, that match, again, with Buttrev being on the lane already, and then, of course, how they tried to either not disrupt that side of the lane too much. Certainly put them in a, a challenging spot as, as lefties go. But uh, Brandon Bowen made some shots. So Eric Jones will take game one. Again, the winners will advance. They will face each other in the final match. Format will remain the same in that as well. Best two out of three. They'll be on 35 and 36. Executive Bowl. Only matches left and only matches remaining. Here are these two. I heard there might be some action a little bit later after this. And quickly we begin game number two here between Jones and Buttruff. Again, Jacob started the day in 25th place. He went 248-279 and uh, essentially wrote his own ticket to the top eight. Anthony Nyer, the number one seed. These four, these four players, in fact, let me find my trusty info. If I still have it. Yeah, these four players were uh, 1, 2, 3, 25 when the day started. Eric Jones was actually the leader coming into this morning. This morning's cashers round, he took the lead and had it after the advancers round last night. Anthony Dyer was second. Brandon Bone was third. And again, Buttruff was 25th. It ends up after six games this morning as Nyer, Buttruff, Bone, or excuse me, Nyer, Buttruff, uh, then Bone fourth with Eric Jones sixth.
just joining us. Brandon Bone, right side of your screen. He's taking on Anthony Nyer. That's Anthony Nyer on the lanes. Jacob Buttruff. He'll be on the road to uh, Anderson along with uh, Anderson, Indiana, that is, along with Anthony Nyer. Tim Cagle headed that direction as well. Several players who were just bowling and I'm sure hitting the road already. Another great Bradley Open and uh, we are just games away. From knowing who will be crowned the official 2024 champion. When Brandon Bowen gets hot, same thing with Anthony and I, right? And it, we can say that about everybody here. Well, you just you just watch kind of the bounce a little bit from Brandon Bowen. Very swaggy dude. But Nyer doing what he had to do. This one kind of started just like the uh, the match with uh, Williams Vincent. Nyer came out 250 plus. Uh, it's actually a little bit of the opposite, I should say. Then he had a very tough game to struggle. And then both players come out spare seven bagger to that degree in game three. And, and now are able to withstand the run from uh, Svensson. Missed the 10-pin there. Did William in the round of eight. Your scores in the respective matches on their respective sides. Parker Bone joined us in the round of eight, and uh, he will rejoin us in the finals. Should Brandon make his way back here to uh, 35 and 36? Jason Uchwall rejoining us now after handling some tournament director business. I we'll picked the wrong headset for the label, second time. We'll label the headsets for you. I know. Label headsets for me and give a cam a stopwatch or a timer of some sort. <laughs> New alarm clock. <laughs> he did good today. The uh, nice nice moment, or not moment, excuse me, nice note from Jerry Marsh here. Saying that Anthony playing the uh, similar line where he crushed them at the Masters. Just talking about that, uh, that master situation. I was talking to Parker a minute ago, and he asked me how often or how many times in this event have I had two players under the age of 21 that potentially make the final. Yeah, Jamar here just said we could have the youngest champion, perhaps. Yeah. Is that it would it cross the, does it, does it, well, Jacob's 29. Yeah, so I would, think, I actually think that Brandon and Eric are both under 20. Uh, Eric for sure is 19. We looked his birthday up. Pretty sure Brandon is. And I think Brandon. Let's see what I can find real quick. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep, he'll be 20 in the summer. So he's 19. Yeah. That's wild. It is wild. <laughs> Does that make you feel old? It makes me feel old. Well. And you are significantly younger than me, my I'm, I'm going through my own thing over here because I'm going to be 40. <laughs> so we were talking about something earlier about college bowling. And uh, we were talking about a sectional specifically that was in, held in Tempe, Arizona in 2004. And I said it out loud. Like, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> 
called B squared. It doesn't take him very long to get back on track. I think that's one of the best traits about him. And, and not that he was <coughs> off track. Yeah. Right, but he figured it out. Both players, again, started slow. First to double, figure some things out. He and I have a little chuckle. Meanwhile, Eric Jones, another 19-year-old from Edmond, Oklahoma. And I think Anthony just rolled out that uh, that Brooklyn. Yeah, it was a big shot. I, I think they are now in that, you know, where we've seen the lefties um, <coughs> having uh, an issue or two has been, you know, obviously the front part of the lane really starts to go. Yeah. And their laydown points become – very significant. Uh, the also the other thing too we were talking about during the uh, qualifying. You know, for those who were kind of playing them in the righties, you know, they started to get into that territory where lefties lay down points were, yeah. and everyone's got surface. Didn't have that happen here, but uh, it, it looks very similar. Yeah, definitely. That was a good shot. You can see exactly what that meant to Jacob Butcher right there. Yeah, hundred percent. Eric Jones looking very comfortable. That rolled out Brooklyn pins uh, helped Anthony quite a lot there. Goes from a potential strike, spare strike to uh, three in a row and Brandon splits. Just like that. <coughs> Never over until it's over. Both matches going uh or potentially going to three games. We had three of the four round of eight matches go three games. It is the best of three. Big loft, bounce. That was close. Yeah. So you're 47 off the sheet there, and you are, as soon as those graphics stop for me. Watching on AJ. AJ did bowl. Uh, he was, he was bowling last night in the advantage round. AJ? Correct. Yeah. yeah, he was bowling. So it's a potential 47 to 57 finish. That's got a hook. Oh, that one didn't read. It was a little pitch left. <coughs> Cover for Jacob. Big bucket spare there. That Jones still in the lead in the game and has the lead in the match. Big cover down here for Brandon as well. 21 pins, the difference right now. Great cover. <coughs> yeah, folks, if you wouldn't mind to hit that thumbs up. Can we get like 100 likes on this video? Do it for Jason Uchwal. That would be awesome. Great shot. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't sure about that. <laughs> that was that was a. Oh, okay. Oh, that's four. That changes a lot. <coughs> this is a match on uh, Nyer Bohm. I, I feel like you you could watch like twelve games of that. It'd yeah. be okay. You just you could just watch that. I think on any condition. Yeah, on anything, right. It yeah. doesn't have to be this. Eric Jones is just so, like, he's the most oh. business-like dude I've seen in a minute. Just like, all right, let me just go do my thing. Yeah. Really oh, great that's another group. one. And that's five in a row for Nyer. Remember, that was a rolled out Brooklyn in the – Six. Well, as Parker said earlier, <coughs> you know, Brooklyn's tap won't be they the do. first, won't be the last. Absolutely each, not. Each person is going to probably get one. Yeah. Yeah, but it definitely shows you how games can change really quick. Yeah, you know? a couple of 19-year-olds, Demar, would be solid. Just, just as uh, thinking about where we are in our lives, two 19-year-olds can go at it for five figures. Yeah. That's how you uh, tap seven there. So now that game goes to a possible 226, and <coughs> good shot. Anthony Nair looked just lost in the first game and has.
has returned the favor. Yeah. And it's like he's going to even this match up. Meanwhile, Jacob yeah. Buttroff with that strike in the eighth would love to double up here. Push, push, it hooks. And Jacob with that look like, what is going on here? Good shot. That is going to three over there. I completely <coughs> agree. Is it, uh, is it uh, Andrea or Andrea? Oh, oh wow. And that that is going to all but do it. Andrea or Andrea? For Joey. Andrea. Andrea, thank you. You are correct, Andrea. Andrea. I love Joey. Fun fact, Andrea here, my first year working this tournament, uh, she walked us over the phone on how to set up the box in the back. Yeah. On the internet. It was new. Yep. And uh, she handled it. Thank you. <coughs> well, that one's going to three over there. I'm going to uh, duck out quick, get Jacob his check, and uh, be back for... Okay. Round three of uh, Anthony and uh, Brandon over there. Oh. Would have been interesting. Yeah. Yeah, could have been. Uh, that's, uh, that's in the 20s, at least. So, I will be back. All right. Payday is coming. For Jacob Buttroff, certainly perturbed, and understandably so. But we will have one 19-year-old in the finals here at the Bradley. We'll see if we'll have two. I'm going to find that out here in just a moment. And we're tied at one apiece. To 23, 171. All right, here we go. Your bone tied at one game apiece. The winner is going to face Eric Jones, the number six seed, again, who came in as the leader this morning, lost the lead, but maintained a spot in the top eight, and that's all you needed for a chance to win this tournament. It was not a step ladder, so seeding certainly important, important excuse me, regarding lane choice. Well, he's got that gym back in his hand. And I tell you, every time he's thrown that ball, it's resulted in numerous uninterrupted strings of strikes. It's always funny. You, when you get a quiet bowling center, right, you can just hear everything. I haven't heard a change machine in a long time. Nice early double for Bone. Even when you take or go to an arcade, I guess a newer like arcade, now you need a card. 
You put money on the card, and then you tap the card to then play said game. I kind of missed the quarter situation, maybe even a token. Brandon went back, had a quick word with that, Parker. Cam Crow's been hanging out. Those two bold uh, doubles together in the Major Plumbing double shootout. And thanks to all of our sponsors here. I mentioned Major Plumbing, new sponsor this year. H5G, been on board for a minute, along with Creating the Difference, CTD. And, of course, title sponsors, Motive and Cubica AMF. You know, Jeff, I'm just old enough to really appreciate <laughs> some of the things we had as children. Third time lucky. Third time's the charm. <laughs> So real quick, uh, Jason, when you just look across your years of, of running this event, um, I know each year is different and kind of special in its own right, and we don't have a champion yet, but, you know, what stood out for you this year uh, to this point? Um, I think it's a completely different field. <coughs> um, obviously great players all the way through. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of people have uh, comment, commented in the past about the um, heavy amount of PBA players or professional players before. And not that we don't have them here today. I mean, we have some on show. Um, but I think some of the names are not as recognized as they should be by the uh, general public. I think they're, uh, a lot of people are under the impression if uh, if you are a PBA regular player that automatically means that you're going to come in and win some of these events and I think uh, it's always good to see all levels of players competing um, so that's new uh, not new but it's a little bit more prevalent this year with the field there's not as many um, full-time national PBA guys here um, which I love to see them here and I love for them to participate I think it's a very uh, equalizing pattern. Um, so that, that part's been different. Um, you know, I, I think that there's, I think the part that a lot of the the stream doesn't see and the, uh, Oof, he gave it a run at it. You know, there's always a lot of great camaraderie. You know, you can't see that behind the camera. Um, you see the competitive side and, and some lighter moments, but everyone comes out and has a good time. Um, I, I'm not saying that's more or better this year than it has been in the past. Um, but that's always great to see as well. So, you know, two different perspectives of it. The bowling side's always great. The quality's great. Different people. A lot of first-time participants. <coughs> Got left quick. Quickly getting to a situation here for Brandon where his look is not as tight at the moment as Anthony Nyer, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty close there. I mean, if Anthony strikes on the next shot, he, he's got the strike advantage and the pin advantage. If he spares, you know, you're within two pins, so... <coughs> Good cover. Great shot. That's difficult, certainly, to deal with. And Brandon knows he's he's got to lock in, do what he what he's been doing. Yeah. 
I mean, you've, you've still got a close game here. It's within three pins. Um, Brandon started out well with the double. Anthony opened. Um, you know, and as we saw last game, though, it's not always about how you, you start. It's always about how you finish. This is Seaver with a good question. Great shot. Another one. <coughs> Huge double there for Nyer. Uh, good question for Mrs. Siebert. She says, uh, has there ever been an all left-handed final? Um, I'd have to think about that. I don't know. I don't know if there there may have been in the past. Um, I can't I can't remember an all left final for for me. Oh, that's a little in. Um, you know, there's there's been multiple lefties that have made the final. Obviously, there's plenty of lefties that have won. Um, going back over my years of of running the event, um, I don't think there's been two lefties in the final. So potential potential first here. I think Brandon just unable to play him the way he played 37 and 38. Oh, wow. You never know how that may come into come into play, but that is a spare. Yeah. This feels like a must strike right here in the seventh for Brandon. Yeah, I think he's got to get some momentum for the back four frames. Um, and then he's obviously still going to need some help from Anthony as well. <coughs> Those of you interested, Northwestern leading Minnesota. 3426. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Big Ten basketball on FS1. Still left over from uh, the Pete Weber Missouri Classic show. Nice Great. ball change. Great shot there. Big time ball change there. And a must strike scenario. <laughs> Freddie, I, I don't know the answer, but I'm, I'm guessing it's 15 pounds. He asks what. Uh, how many pounds is Brandon throwing? He just throws it hard. Throwing it like that, he can throw <laughs> that, 20. That's all. It's a great shot. Same thing with Anthony Nyer. Although I'm sure he could throw 16 without trouble. I agree. Like I said, if they made it 20, I think these guys could throw it. It's the epitome of great bowling families, the Bones and the Nyers, respectively. Look at Anthony's dad, Andy. Multi-time winner on the PBA Tour. As Parker said earlier, went out on tour about two years after Parker did. Bang. Another one. Nair, his sister, Alexis, was on the PWBA Tour, also a head coach at Wartburg College in Iowa. Brandon, of course, his brother, Justin, collegiate player at SCAD, Savannah, Savannah, Georgia, his sister, Sydney, Recently committed to Vanderbilt University. Of course, Mom Leslie, a national champion in oh. Wichita State. And wow, slicing through the heart. My goodness. Ouch. That, that, wow. We've seen some leaves this week on this 50-plus foot lane condition with high volume. That is the 2, two six, six, eight, ten. Eight, ten. Two six eight ten. Whoa. He gave it a run. <laughs> As he turned, Parker says, "You know, I had to work on that spare." That gets a laugh from Brandon and the crowd. As Brandon turned to his left, I could, I can see the resemblance to Mom Leslie. But it's going to be Anthony Nyer. The number one seed is going to face Eric Jones. Brand is going to speed it up. Get out of uh, Anthony's way. Nice run from Brandon Bone this week. That's another good shot there. Again, I'm going to pop out of the booth, grab another check, and get back here for a final. Indeed, I'm going to move a camera to get us set. Excellent comeback indeed. Uh-oh, well, this could be a lofting contest. 
Oh, okay. Imagine if Anthony Dyer and Brandon Bone both on the same team. How wild would that be?
Did I, I pick the third, the right one again? No, you're perfect. Twice. All right, here we go. Eric Jones, Anthony Dyer. Jones chosen to go first by Anthony Dyer. He had a lane choice to decide who wants to go first, et cetera, and so forth as the number one seed. Best two out of three. Two uh, young players out chasing the PBA Tour, along with there uh, were so many PTQ players this week. That's been uh, one topic of discussion throughout. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been another point earlier for what you said was different. There's a, there's a lot more PTQ guys that here this week. Uh, a lot of the international guys that uh, come over and – uh, give the PBA a run. This is the final, folks, if you are just joining us. Nyer versus Jones. Their roads to, to this point. Anthony Nyer defeated Williams Vinson two games to one. Then uh, take care of Brandon Bone two games to one. Eric Jones defeated Zeke Bate two games to one. And then Jones sweeping Jacob Buttruff two games to nil. They were all interesting matches there too. <coughs> Eric was down 1-0 to Zeke. Um, Anthony came out of the gates against William. Um, and then they had a awesome third game. I think at one point it was a uh, spare seven in a row for both of them. <coughs> Heard Anthony uh, talking to <laughs> Eric and saying, I can't believe we got a bowl of PTQ tomorrow. <laughs> they are headed to Anderson, Indiana as soon as this event is over. Yeah, and I think the uh, – the uh, Pro-Am starts tonight. There's Pro-Am tonight. You can check the schedule at PBA.com. There will be, of course, live coverage of the event on Bowl TV. So if you wonderful subscribers of Bowl TV out there getting the best of the best of the PBA, I'm sure the crew all is just about set and ready at uh, Dave Small's Championship Lanes for the Just Bear PBA Indiana Classic. Catch Mike and BK. Tom, I think Craig might be back. Jones. Oh. 
A little interesting. This is the fresh two, by the way, folks. This is a fresh pair. Let's see who may benefit, quote unquote, the most in that regard. Now, if you go off with this morning, it, that would uh, fresh would favor Anthony. Um, but it's although it's fresh and um, you're moving. I, the big difference is you're moving back to it, right? So you start fresh, you run fresh here for the eight, you move over to a different pair. They're playing completely different, which I'm sure that uh, Anthony and Brandon will both attest to that moving on to 41 and 42 was, was not what they saw earlier. Yeah, absolutely. And now you're back to fresh again. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people uh, – saw earlier or heard on the chat that there is no resurfacing in between either. Um, whatever they did in practice before the first official ball of the top eight is what they had to um, play the rest of this event with. So no matter how much surface that they're putting on it, um, it's changing. That's a good point. <coughs> You know, and these guys are both playing it, in my opinion, differently, you know. A little slower ball speed for Eric Jones. Definitely. He wants to see it kind of roll, certainly, and, and hook. Obviously, uh, you know, playing that early hook is Anthony Nyer using his speed and power to handle it. Great shot. Yeah, Eric... Uh, Let's see, last night, yeah, he went 212, 245, 269 on the fresh. Yeah, but this morning, it was, uh, what was it this morning to start off? This morning, Eric went uh, 168, 192, 223. Yep. Nine spare, nine spare, double. Side view. Didn't work. Oof. Good shot. Seven pin. 2024 Bradley Open coming to a close. Champions Trophy. Just to the right of uh, one Jason Uchwall. Ready to give it away. But you really won't be giving it away because champions earned it here at this tournament. 100%. Got a poll put up on who you got, Nyer or Jones. And uh, Anthony Nyer got 67% of your of your vote, chat. That's a great shot. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to make sure that rule. I heard the uh, I heard uh, the tournament staff and imply the rule twice just to make sure everyone understood regarding what the surface rules are for match play. Yeah, I mean, for, for us it's a little bit different. I know that there's other locations that do it a little bit different. Um, but to me, it uh, it keeps it interesting. Um, you know, you've got any, any bowler that makes it to this point at the end, even top eight, top 40, they've all bowled great to get there all weekend. Um, you know, I, I don't care if it's right-handed or left-handed or two-handed or traditional. It, it doesn't matter. They've they've bowled really well to get here. You know, so... See how we keep going here. Eric Jones, it's a... Uh Thank you for that. So we can have that opportunity to discuss as he is nestled up near the ball return, just like Nyer is on lane 36. The 19-year-old got a hook. All right, wash out for Jones. Again, from Edmond, Oklahoma. Like many, 
who were able to do so during the uh, pandemic. Eric Jones and his dad built a lane in their backyard during the early days so he can keep on doing his thing in regards to a practice perspective. That's awesome. I had a pin setter, a functioning pin setter at that. Got the attention of a lot of folks, so it went viral a little bit. At that time, he was 17. It was two years ago, almost a full two. I enjoyed not just reading, but reading books to get a professional advantage. He's a really good, uh, good read. Athlete spotlight written by Nolan Hughes, PBA.com. Great shot. Yeah. It's back to back uh, wrap sevens on specifically on the left lane. We talked about teenagers winning regionals, which is very commonplace. Yeah. Now, he is no stranger to that also. Won the uh, Oklahoma City Southwest Open as a sophomore. It's pretty neat. The show at the PBA Jonesboro Open, where he took uh, fourth place. Both of these players have made shows. Anthony, of course, making the Masters show uh, in 2021. Good shot. Remember when uh, lanes were being built and you just see all the photos, videos of bowlers who tried to take care of business on their own, essentially. Oh, there's Change that a non-breaking down split situation again. It's been happening a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's a quick way to change the game there. Uh, Andrea, <laughs> the uh, I simply just put like eight pieces of large tape over the outlet. Haven't had a problem since. But Only one time this weekend, right? Two. Two? It was two on the doubles <coughs> within a game of one another, which the first one didn't knock out the audio. The second one did, if you recall. Yes, I do. This one's interesting. Yeah, Eric still got the advantage overall for finish. Spare strike, spare for 180 for Anthony for 180. Maybe go sheet for 2-0. Uh, um, Eric can go clean for 190 or strike out for <coughs> I need to learn how to handle that switch myself while I'm uh, coughing over here. Interesting. Where I think if uh, you know, it's going to be who who might get comfortable the best first. Yeah, they each have a double, but and, and Eric's thrown some really good shots. Wrap two sevens. And misses the two seven. Takes the ten off. Looks back at that thing. <coughs> 
188 max for Eric Jones, and that's what Nyer's looking for. And he hung a little bit a couple of frames ago after bowling on the right lane. Uh, it might have been his first shot on the left or second, one or the other. But he counted the dots of the boards yeah. on the left lane. So he can. Uh, what I think he was doing was lining up, making sure he lined up where he was kind of close to the ball return, if you will, in the right lane. Right. So he can produce or reproduce Big that shot on the here. left. He's got a hook. Oh. I got that one down there kind of quick. Eric Jones, no matter what, is going to have a chance to win game one. Yeah. Great run at it. 172. <coughs> now the job is a little bit simpler. Yeah, need a mark here and just count. Mark and five, the count. If it's a spare, it won't matter as well. Just got to make it. Ball yeah. change. Oh. oh. The trouble just a nine pin. <coughs> so cover here and a five count to win by one. Haven't seen a ton of uh, random counts, but they have popped up every now and then. Talking about for like a five count? Yes. Or, or lower. Uh, Greek church or washout. Or lower. All right. <coughs> so outside, r leaving some random four count here, which would put us on a tie. Uh, this should be game one win for Eric Jones. Tell you about a little history on that fact here, if that does indeed happen. It's enough. That is plenty. <coughs> Game one goes to Anthony, or excuse me, Eric Jones, 177 to 172. So Eric Jones and Anthony Nyer have a little bit of history facing each other in a stepladder or title-like scenario in a super regional. And I think it was 2022. Jones defeated Anthony Nyer in the uh, that stepladder's opening match. Jones uh, did not win. He went on to uh, lose to Tim Foy Jr. In the next match. But so these two very familiar with one another, and you know th th these are the kind of players where you, ten years from now, right, you'd be looking at, thinking about Eric Jones at 19, thinking about Anthony Nyer making a show, making a 7-10, and then but all while they're you know accumulating now these titles. Yeah. Game count to the right of your screen. Eric Jones with the advantage. It's not the first time that uh, Anthony Dyer trail, though. He lost game one to Brandon Bone in the round of four and yep. won the last two to advance here to the title match. That was a comeback win game two as well because uh, Brandon started with the front four. <coughs> Early open. Multi spin, uh, multi pin spares are not always easy to begin with on a on a regular shot. On this, it just makes it a little bit tougher. <coughs> you 
They do have a PTQ tomorrow. That is indeed true. And a bowl at 8.30 a.m. After just grinding for two days yeah. here at the Bradley. I, I bet that swing might be a little loose, or those swings might be a little loose for everybody who's got a bowl tomorrow. A lot of people have Not said just that. just them. A lot of people have said that. <clears throat> Don't have to hit one board. Or maybe. Depends on what they're bowling. Good shot. shot. Six pin. Good cover. What are you seeing from your vantage point, Rod, watching over here? Obviously, two young players, two very, very good players, uh, came out obviously on the fresh, on the fresh, uh, kind of throwing <coughs> good shots. I felt some breaks, not so much. A couple wrap sevens from Eric Jones, for example. What are you seeing besides that strike from Nyer? Well, I think Anthony's arguably had the best look all day um, through qualifying this morning, and definitely off the start in the round of eight. Um, you know, he, he bowled a tight, tight match with uh, William Svensson in the first round and looked to be cruising, to be quite honest, through game one. And then William bowled a good game. Anthony jumped right back on it, got his look back, um, and has played strong all day. I think jumping to the other pair he was in in the semifinal might have changed his look a little. Um, Eric's done super well all weekend as well. You know, tight mat, tight matches, getting in. Uh, struggled a little bit this morning on the fresh in comparison to what he bowled yesterday. Because um, he was the leader coming into this morning, correct? Uh, Eric Jones was, yes. 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 Yeah, so he was the leader coming into this morning and then started not so great. Fell back, pushed his way back up the field a little. You know, um, I think earlier in the chat when we were talking with Matt here, there was a point where he could have fallen out of the number, you know. Um, but two great bowlers with two different looks at it, um, delivering two different ways and just executing great shot after great shot. You know, they're making a super hard shot look easy or easier, um, where at Whereas it can look tough really quick if the shot's off. So, you know, I, I, it's been a pleasure watching them both and how they're approaching it. <coughs> Nyer, junior gold champion, five-time junior Team USA member. Oh, oh, Roll it. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> tell you as fun as uh or as much money i should say is on the line this feels like a like a very casual cool like and yeah. i think it's because again of who's bowling the ages where they are you know constantly being or competitors but friends yeah you know chasing this ptq thing all the time yeah i think that's definitely different as well i've talked about that earlier about like camaraderie between the players and I think in the past, um, watching some of the events, they can get very tense. Whereas the atmosphere here, definitely between, oh, <laughs> give, it, give it right back, right? That's great. <laughs> you know, you can see that they're, you know, they both want to win, but they're both um, definitely laid back. So. See if Jones can capitalize here. Yeah, he can. Shot. I don't know what ball change or ball he went to, but it's been the one. 
That's not the ball. The one. <laughs> but it has been the you one You mean it's for been him. the right <laughs> ball to select. Back five here for Jones and now Nyer. And I continue on. Great shot. We're still tied right now. And I opted to uh, make that leap to the PBA Tour kind of post-COVID after uh, you know, COVID took away most of uh, bowling for 2020. I said, hey, uh, I'm ready to do what I want to do. I've been waiting his whole life to, to bowl on tour, of course, watching his dad. learning and working of course with his sister as well Appreciate the wonderful viewership we've had here this weekend, and especially today. Both the cashers round and our finals have been well attended. Appreciate that. For six in a row. Got away from him a little. The inner game of uh, tennis book reader. I think many have read that book. I've been told it has been, uh, it's one of the, uh, it's definitely one of the more recommended mental game books. Which one's that? The Inner Game of Tennis. Huh. I've heard that one recommended a ton. And uh, that's someone who read it. Not only did he read it, but then he <coughs> used what he read to uh, make some waves in the Super Regional I was discussing in Virginia in 2022. But an avid book reader. What's on your book list? I'm not a big book guy. Not a, you're not in the book club? No. Come on, bro. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, not a big book guy. Um, doesn't mean that I... Uh, don't like to read it's just not typically books it's probably articles and I like a lot of history based stuff myself my goal was to add more books these last couple of years and I feel like I, I'd start a book oh that's Eric Jones another mistake there now I with a chance to even this one up I start yeah. a book and then uh, it just takes me a while to then go back to it and finish yeah see that Get too busy. I was going to say, I, I would assume with your schedule, <laughs> that's probably uh, pretty easy to do. Anthony. Oh, flat. The seven pin. He has the lead, though. Ball is in his court. As long as he takes care of this, he strikes in the ninth. He won't be, or can't get shut out. Those of you who may be watching on the road, please drive safely. Whether you're going back home or to the next PBA stop or to work or all of the above. Clean through eight is Nair. He trails in the match one game to zero. <coughs> Out of trouble there. Well, that could have been disastrous. But now that max is 236. Yeah. And that 
Um, could leave Eric being able to strike out here for 232. But he's going to finish first, you know. So if he is, if he's able to manage to put four in a row together, that's um, then going to need a double in the tenth. See a great combo. Combo. We talked to uh, Parker as he called the match. Big thanks to Parker Bone the third two for spending a round of eight with me as he watched uh, Brandon Bone and Daniel Farish go at it. First for Jones, that is right. Crosses over, oh. and what a break. Yeah, super appreciative to Parker for dropping in and giving some commentary there. Like I said, that's a uh, extremely tough act to follow. Doesn't strike here. Be looking at a game in the two teens. Mm -hmm. Needs this. Closer. Great shot. Like that one. One more here, and he's going to force Anthony to make a double. <coughs> You know, and then looking back at it there, there's there's two mismakeables there, too. Yeah, it would be very rare, obviously, yeah. for someone to come out on top with two mismakeables in one game and still win a match, let alone a game. It could be done, though. It's close. Another one. I was going to say, you liked it off his hand. Barring wild count here on the fill. Anthony Nye is going to need a double. The Bradley Open title going to the hands of Eric Jones. Close. 231. Good finish. Yeah. Hard here, though. You know, and like I said, looking back, that's uh, two mismakeables from Eric. Two four seven on one of them. That would have closed it out. Double and six. Did not like it, and, and almost tripped it out. The Bradley Open Championship belongs to Eric Jones of Edmond, Oklahoma. Eric, perhaps the youngest champion at uh, 19 years of age. I'm pretty sure that's definite. <coughs> the book reader, the avid book reader, investing in his mental game, investing in his practice regimen when bowling centers in the entire world was closed during COVID. Wins the 2024 Bradley Open. Nice run by Anthony Nyer. He bowled fantastic right, throughout the tournament. The I'm going to jump off here, Emil, and go and uh, hand out some hardware. My man. Your runner-up for this year is 2024 Bradley Open, Anthony Meyer. And your winner, Eric Jones. Again, we'd like to thank everybody for coming out, spectators, followers. I'd like to thank the staff here at Executive. It's been amazing all weekend. For everybody traveling, please be safe. We'll see you next year. Thank you. 
Eric Jones and Anthony Dyer will both take photos. And of course, Anthony, or excuse me, Eric will take one more. Well, was it who was it on the road? Forgot who called uh, Eric Jones the winner, like yesterday. And that was indeed the right one. real quick. Folks, let's see. Let's get Eric in for a moment. <laughs> All right, folks, this is uh, the what many believe to be the youngest Bradley Open champion. And uh, Eric Jones, Eric, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, hard weekend, certainly difficult. This was your first opportunity to bowl this tournament. Second. Second, okay. Yeah. Any? What was the difference? Any Any differences in your first opportunity to bowl it? And, of course, now you're the champion here. Uh, well, first one, I used 500 grit instead of a real harsh 360. <laughs> and then also wasn't as good as with my speed. It was two years ago. Wasn't as good, but a bit better with speed control, a bit better with knowing what I'm supposed to do for this tournament. No, better image all around. The, uh, so you were 17 at that point? Yes, sir. And obviously, two years of, of learning. Um, you go out on tour. You're on tour currently, chasing it week to week. Uh, you win the PTQ, have a good showing there. Uh, what has this journey been like for you as a 19-year-old trying to kind of make your spot, earn your keep uh, as a professional? And it's fantastic. I've got, I'm really lucky with an opportunity. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to take care of a family. I'm still dependent, so I can go out here and really not risk too much and not have too much weight on me. It's really, the main goal is learning, but then everything is just an add-on on that. So it's been a really great experience this year. Wouldn't trade for anything. The Bradley, obviously, is its own challenge. And uh, how were you able to kind of maneuver uh, squad to squad, uh, you know, pair to pair, certainly, um, and the and the surface, you know, that you were able to put on. You know, how were you able to maneuver throughout all of those things here this weekend? Well, I uh, mainly stuck between two balls. It was a mindset and a an archetype. An archetype has a two inch pin. Mindset's a four and a half. And really, the main goal is just controlling the fronts. There was a the carry was pretty nice. You were able to get that like fade off hit or go high and just trip everything. So I was kind of relying on that. If I get a ball set up and then just kind of poop the rest of the lane, <laughs> I was fine. Until this pair where I was actually, like, trying to get normal ball reaction. Yeah, it looked kind of hard. I was like, <laughs> back on the fresh a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony and I are obviously a tough competitor. You guys have faced one another before, super yes. regional. Um, you know, how, what did you think about the field, which many of them you know uh, yeah. on tour? Uh, it incredible field i mean every single match i'm shaking in me boots <laughs> but uh yeah it's, it's like bowling a ptq but then it's head-to-head -head stuff a little bit of mind tricks come in mean, sick field speaking of that you got to bowl a ptq tomorrow yep at 8 30 a.m yep uh 
quick game plan on what do you do? You know what you're bowling on tomorrow? Uh, it's Don Johnson, I think. Okay. All right. Don Carter, one of them. How, just give the the audience just an inside look into kind of how you approach week to week uh, out on tour. Uh, man, uh, well to begin with the PTQs, you just it, those are one of those things where it's just a sprint. You throw a bad game and. I mean, you have to shoot 270 almost immediately. So you just you find an image, you keep the image, try and keep keeping the image. Usually they're laying out shore patterns for most of them, so it's even more of a score fest with your thing. Makes, makes sense. Yeah, All right, final question. Um, what's next for you post PBA tour? What else may may you have on the on your schedule this year? Uh, you know, hit the regional swing. Okay. Uh, doing school I'll be doing school in, over the summer catching up because i can't do a bunch of classes right. while i'm on tour but yeah just doing school regional swing that's about it all right a lot one more question i know you're an avid reader so any book recommendations you would give the viewers here and you know two of my favorite uh books well i guess one of them is two books <laughs> but tim grover has a really good series he's got winning or relentless and winning and he's, uh, he was the physical trainer for Michael Jordan. That is Kobe. correct. Yep. Phenomenal books. And then The Inner Game of Tennis, that's a really good one. It kind of gives you two perspectives on how to be a good champion. One is like being away from yourself, and then one is being more aggressive with it. So those are both, or all three of those are phenomenal reads. I mentioned that about you. Uh, well done. Congratulations. And uh, I know you got to get on the road, so I'll let you get to it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That is Eric Jones on his way to Anderson, Indiana, uh, along with Anthony Nyer and everyone else who was headed there. Uh, and, folks, just like that, we had the Bradley beginning, and now the Bradley is ending. And that means it is time to bid everyone adieu. Congrats again to Eric Jones. Handle business. Well, it looks like uh, Anthony Nyer is going to be gracious enough to join us as well. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll talk to Anthony real quick. I appreciate you, sir. Yeah, no good. You did not have to. No, all good. I'll give you that respect. Uh, obviously, tough loss, but I feel like it doesn't diminish the way you bowled. No, it, uh, it, it here, happens, man. Here in this tournament, uh, what was the keys for you? Uh, and I know one of them has to be the right surface. <laughs> yeah, the right, yeah. I mean, that's what it boils down to, all the right surface. But keep my angles in front of me. I was trying to hook the ball in the first 15 feet and just let it use the rest of the oil in the lane, kind of shove down there. I mean, my spares. I didn't miss any spares when I needed to. Um, but, yeah, pretty much in, I just control it front to back with speed and rotation. I didn't ball change very often. Yeah, I mean, and every time you threw the gym, it looked like it was going to strike every time from what I saw this weekend. Yeah, I mean, especially on the burn pairs, it, okay. it was good. But, like, I mean, that's what's tough about this. Like, we bowled three matches, and you can't surface in between matches, and then you come back to the fresh, and it's sure a little different because I had a lot more surface right. on my ball on the fresh. So it wears off, but you know the format when you, when you bowl. Right. So it is what it is. But, like, the last game I needed the ball change, but. I need a double on the tenth, and I'm like, do I make the ball change sure. and risk it, or do I try and hit the pocket with what I got? It is what it is. You, uh, you, and Eric, and you know everybody else that we've been talking about, just making the uh, chasing the PTQ route, uh, of course, on tour. Uh, for you, you know, describe that process. How's it going, and uh, how do you handle it week to week? Um, they're tough. The PTQ route tough. Um, I just try and bowl. What I can, if it's enough, is enough. If it's not, if I bowl good, I can't. There's nothing to be mad about. I mean, you got what you got. So there's the PTQ rush is tough because I mean you're taking 11 out of however many bowlers there are. But just try and stay patient. And the mental, the mental grinds where it's at. You got to be in a good spot mentally. Or you're, they're just gonna make it even worse. What was the uh, was this was your first time bowling this? Yeah, never right. bowled to Bradley before. First time. What would be what would be your takeaways from the event, and would you bowl it again? Yeah, we'll bowl again. Um, takeaways would be just don't give up the pocket. Like, I've seen some people trying to, like, make your ball hook. It ain't going to hook. <laughs> like, There's in no the doubt about that. In the final game there when Eric wins that trouble mm -hmm. make a pearl, that was the most I've seen a ball hook down lane. 
Like, I agree. But I all week, all weekend, like never seen a ball hook down lane like that. Like that was impressive. That it was hooking like that. I agree. But when you get when you fall into trying to play that, you just not good. Well, I know you got to hit the road. Uh, get on that road. Uh, a lot of belief for, for for a lot from a lot of people in you. So like everybody in the PTQ, keep your head up, keep grinding. Thanks, and uh, you're going to do your thing. I'm going to do my best. All right, my man. Thank you. Nice bowling. That is Anthony Nyer, gracious enough to join me for a little bit. He's going to hit the road, and now we can officially call it a one. i uh, got to thank, um, of course, Jason Uchwalt, our wonderful uh, tournament director here at the Bradley. All the great competitors, the entire tournament staff here as well this weekend. Uh, it's always a fun uh, watch from my vantage point and uh, of course if you're bowling it's probably not all of that fun uh, that's just what you go into I uh, want to thank all of our sponsors here this week Cubic AMF, Motive creating the difference uh, Major Plumbing, new sponsor this year and H5, uh, H5G excuse me, High 5 Gear Lanes are being oiled looks like either uh, there might be some sweeper tournament league, one or the other uh, so I'm going to get out of here, tear down and then hit the road uh, back to the Chicagoland area. I appreciate all of you for joining me, all of you for subscribing to Bullstream TV uh, while you were here this weekend. Thank you for the support. Of course, thank you for supporting the event, and uh, certainly thank you for supporting Jason Uchwall. Next time uh, you'll hear from me regarding Bullstream TV, we'll be, uh, we got a little Elite Youth Tour next week. Uh, you can check that out on the Elite Youth Tour Facebook page on the Elite Stream sponsored by Bullstream TV. And then uh, hit the road to Wisconsin in a couple of weekends for the Wisconsin State High School Tournament, which is always uh, a fun stream. Until then, um, might be on some PBA events. I got a PWBA regional coming up as well uh, for Bowl TV. So I'll be around. You guys know where to find me. Until then, uh, big thanks again to Jason. One thank Parker Bone the third for joining me in the round of eight. Daniel Ferris for joining me. All of our guests this week. Jeremy Thomas, Ryan Sidney, Matt Zweig this morning, uh, and everyone in between. We say so long for now. Don't forget to uh, support the PBA. They are in Anderson, Indiana. You can watch all of that live on Bowl TV this week. Congrats again to Eric Jones from Edmond, Oklahoma, 19 years of age, the 2024 Bradley Open champion. This has been a presentation of said Bradley Open. You watched it live and only on Bowl Stream TV. We'll see you soon.